In this next series of videos, we're going to explore the relation between plants, specimens, and photos. Or, in more general terms, we're going to look at how to create a one-to-many relationship and one that even goes to multiple one-to-many relationships. So a plant so far has been a definition, uh, a scientific definition of a plant. Uh, what's its origin? What's its classification in the Linnaeus uh, categorization system? A specimen is an idea of a specific plant that we can touch. There will definitely be multiple specimens of one plant. So a red oak is a plant, but you might have three red oaks in your yard, or there might be a red oak in the park or something like that. Now, each of these red oaks can have multiple photos. So we go from one to many, uh, and then one to many again. So in exploring this, we're going to get to look at several of the advanced prime faces components. One, the one we're going to look at in this video, is a select event, where we can take a look at one of our plants that we see in our existing plant places application, and we can do a selection on it. In other words, to navigate from one plant to its specimens, we're going to have to select a plant. And then we can create a specimen, for example. Once we've created the specimen, we can use the Prime Faces Upload option. So if we go to File, I know that's a bit off screen, File Upload, uh, we can take a look at the File Upload capability where we can upload a photo. Let's visualize this on the real plant places. So this is plant places, and what we have here is uh, some specimens I grabbed literally within the last 24 hours in Washington, D.C. So you see here is Washington, D.C. on a map. You see here's the National Zoo, and then here's the mall with the Washington Monument and the United States Capitol and so on and so forth. If you take a look, if I zoom up here, we're going to see the Smithsonian, and you see I have GPS several plants here uh, around the National Museum of... Uh, 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 <laughs> the name passed me now. The Museum of Natural uh, Natural History. So what I can do is each of these little pins here represents a specimen of a plant. Let's see what this one is. This one is Acer rubrum red maple. I can click on this, and this happens to be a very common plant, uh, one that we see quite a bit. So incidentally, here's one I took at the U.S. Capitol several years ago, back in 2012, a picture I took there. So that's a specimen of the red maple. And we keep going. There's several other at the U.S. Capitol, uh, one in the United Kingdom. And eventually we should get down and we will see uh, Richmond, one in Kew Gardens. Uh, we'll see this is one that I've GPS, but I did not photograph. And I took this just within the last 24 hours in Washington, D.C. So here we see a plant with several specimens, and those specimens, like this one in Birmingham, can have multiple photos, or they can have no photos, or they can have one photo. So we want to give that flexibility, uh, and we can exhibit that flexibility with the database. So let's get started. We've already created a data table in our application. And what we need to do is we simply need to add the selectability to it. You see the Prime Faces gives us a bunch of different uh, table options. The default one we've done so far is basic, but you see there's editable, group, facets, subtable, scroll, all kinds of things. We're going to start just by looking at this selection. And the one that we're going to take a look at is uh, probably select events. So you see we mouse over and it changes. But then when we select, a little pop-up comes up here. Except for us, instead of a pop-up, we're going to have it navigate to another screen. So I'm going to take a look in our uh, virtual machine. And we see that our website is up. I'm going to type in the word red. And I'm going to choose submit. And we come to our data table with all of the results that have the word red, Chinese red bud, Pleasant Ridge red oak, and red bud misspelled. You see right now, uh, when I click, when I select something, nothing happens. Okay, it just It's basically a read-only data table. So what do we need to change to make this work? Well, let's see. I'm going to take a look here at selection. And let's scroll down. We're going to use the select events. I'm going to scroll down, and we're going to see the select events uh, data table here. So 
event ID or P data table ID event DT. Okay, uh, var car value equals DT select selection views cars three. We pretty much have all of this so far. We have an ID, a var, and a value. Let's confirm. I'm going to go into uh, our development environment and web content, and this is actually results XHTML. Okay, control M. And we have ID, which is a unique identifier for our data table. Var, that means each row is going to be represented by this thing called plant result. Value, this is a collection that we're iterating over to create the data table. So we already have that. What else do we need? I'm going to scroll to the right a bit. Selection mode single, selection equals... And then row key. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to grab these three attributes that we don't have yet. Selection mode single is appropriate because we want to click one. We want to navigate to a new page. Uh, the selection equal, honestly, I, I don't think we're going to need that because we're going to use Ajax. So I'm going to try it first without that. And then the row ID means what's the unique identifier from the row that we click? Let me copy this and then I'm going to explain. You see how the unique identifier here is this global unique identifier. That's how we can uniquely identify each row of this table. And that's how we're going to know which row the user clicked on. Okay, so let's go back and let's put this into our existing data table. So selection mode single, that's fine. Selection, uh, I'm going to remove this for the moment. Row key, this one's important. This is that unique identifier. Let's look at our columns and remember which one is our unique identifier. Our unique identifier is this one, plantresult.guid, global unique identifier. I'm going to copy this value and place it up here. Okay, and then save. Okay, um, I'm going to go back and take a look at prime faces again, and it had a little Ajax nugget. And so if I take a look back at the Ajax nugget, uh, Ajax, that means it's something that's going to happen dynamically without the need to refresh the page. So we see P Ajax event equals row select, listener equals something or other. Let me copy this, and we're going to paste that right here. Event row select, that means we're selecting a row. Uh, listener, that means who gets the information when we select this row. Okay, update, let's not worry about that. We're going to take that away. And I'm going to save. So listener, this is the part that we still have to do. Listener means when the row is clicked, what am I going to call? What method am I going to call? Well, DT selection view. Let's change that to our search plants managed bean. Remember what that is. That's the user interface Java class that handles any events on our page. So I'm going to change this and put uh, search plants on row select. Uh, that sounds good to me. And I'll save. Okay. Now I'm going to take a look at that search plants managed bean. And I'm going to make a method that will receive this event. Okay. And so uh, I'll take a look at the example that Prime Faces gives us. And we see selection view. Okay, is that what they're calling with that Ajax event? Let's take a look. Uh, DT selection view, I believe that's correct. DT selection view, that's good. Okay, so let's take a look at the source code for selection view. And as I scroll down, I should see a method called select event. Okay, on row select, select event event. It's exactly what I want. I want this method right here. So I'm going to grab this, control C to copy. And I'm going to paste it in my managed bean, search plants, and control V. Okay, now uh, I don't need absolutely everything in the sample method that Prime Faces has given me. What I do want to use though is this event parameter that's getting passed in. Because you see what it's doing, the event parameter includes a get object method. And what's that get object method? The get object method says which object did the user click on. In other words, in our data table, which object did the user click on? Not the string, but the actual object that rendered 
that string. Let's go back and take a look. So I'm going to clean things up just a little bit. And boom. Okay. And we're going to say event.getObject, like so. Okay. And I'm going to change this instead of car, I'm going to cast it to plant because rem remember we're dealing with plants here. And then I'm going to save that to a local variable. So we'll say plant, uh, lowercase plant equals plant dot event dot get object and then I'm just going to put in a dummy int i equals one plus one uh, that way I can snap a breakpoint here make sure that breakpoint took and I can visualize line breakpoint there we go I can visualize and make sure that it actually is giving me the plant that I selected so I choose save okay and we'll go ahead and terminate. I'm going to rebuild off screen and then we're going to run this. So I've reloaded the application now. Let's go ahead and start again and I'm looking forward to looking at this in the debugger. I'll go ahead and hit submit. Okay, it's going to bring up this table. Now we see we have several duplicate plants. I should really go into the database and clean those up. Uh, let me go ahead and click on one that we know is different from the others, and that is our Circus chinensis, the Chinese redbud. I'm going to click. Notice that it changes colors as I'm selecting it, and nothing's happening yet. Except if you look in the start menu, you'll see that Eclipse is flashing orange. Sure enough, notice that on row select has been selected. I'm going to step over. Now, if you haven't discovered the debugger yet, you're missing out. You're wasting a lot of time. Spend some time in the debugger. I mouse over, look up above at my variables tab, and you'll see plant. Let's go down, and sure enough, Chinese red bud. So you see at this point, we have successfully uh, gone to the, we have successfully selected the Chinese red bud, and now we're ready to navigate to the next page. So in our next video, we're going to pick up where we left off here, and we're basically going to force this to redirect to a specimen details page. So we'll make that specimen details page, and then we'll do the redirection starting from this point. I look forward to seeing you then.